Welcome back. In my last segment of this Ruger Mini 14 series, I suggested that I was going to mount a scope on this rifle so I could do some before and after accuracy testing uh, with, the, with the glass bedding that I'll be doing. So it would be quite a look back in my archives to come up with the, uh, the last time I did a Ruger uh, scope mounting. It's really a scope attaching, as I've described so many times. You know, these days we're really not mounting a scope. We're just attaching what they have. But the Ruger system is very unique, and uh, it can lead to some troubles if you don't exactly know how to accomplish it. So we're going to step over the bench here and show you exactly how that goes. This is all you need. You've got your Ruger rings, a pencil, some simple mineral oil, alcohol swabs, and a screwdriver with the appropriate bits. You'll need a, a Torx T10, number 10 Torx bit, and uh, an appropriate broad bit to uh, tighten the screws on the rings, and uh, you're good to go. So let's check it out. Now these rings are finished in pairs. That is, on a wheel, these rings are dressed along the edge here and they, can, they should not be separated and mixed. So what you want to do is take your pencil and mark, it doesn't make any difference how you do it, mark one pair across just one side like that and mark the other pair with two marks with a pencil and that's easily seen and removed afterwards with some alcohol. Now, remove the tops from the bottoms of these rings. And uh, to prevent binding of the screws as you're tightening them, take a drop of oil and apply it just at these openings. Apply it to the uh, thread and that's all you need. That will, that will assist you in tightening these threads up. That's a machinist trick, you know. If, uh, if you want to get threads tight, uh, use some oil. Uh, that's, you know, the oil, the oil can be removed afterwards, but that will, that will assist the, the uh, threads in slipping. Now you'll notice that there's an indexing point right here on the bottom of this ring. That fits into this slot on the top of your receiver simply and loosen up your loosen up the screw sufficiently to uh, allow that to open wide place the uh, indexing point right into that slot and then with your fingers simply with your thumb and forefinger draw that up and as you as you draw it up wiggle that ring with your other hand as you draw up that screw tightly and you'll notice that that screw will suddenly slip and turn more freely as you wiggle it. Now you can take your screwdriver with the appropriate bit and tighten that as you continue to wiggle it. Wind it tightly. You don't have to torque it too hard but then Take a heavy dowel or a plastic mallet and give, and give this ring a good jarring and again go to tighten it because sometimes that will loosen up and that allowed me to tighten it up just a little bit more. So you don't want to whack it with a heavy hammer. It's just all we're doing is jarring that so that uh, we're sure that those that everything has seated properly. And that's it. When that screwdriver won't turn anymore, you've got that one done. Repeat. That allowed me to tighten it more. Do not use a do not use a steel hammer on this and do not use anything that will disfigure this. We're only we're only bumping it and this the same thing can be done with a dowel.
That's tight. That's good. Now you may once again want to uh, wipe off the inside of the rings where you've handled them with your oily fingers because a dry ring will prevent any slippage. Now be sure when you're mounting your, placing your scope on top of the bottom half of the rings, make sure that you have clearance. Look back here and make sure that your all parts of your scope are clear and have no contact or not not too close. You don't want to be any closer than about a sixteenth of an inch from any other parts of the gun. But if you can, align things so that uh, you have uh, proper eye relief. We're going to just at this point just leave the scope here and uh, align it visually. And uh, you don't need to have a level or anything like that. I did an entire series on uh, scope mounting before. I did an entire video on scope mounting before and uh, it's entirely unnecessary to use any sort of alignment procedures. Uh, it's, it's a very simple process that I'll take you through uh, and we'll get into it right now. So matching up matching up the witness marks that we put in. We have right here the uh, two pencil marks on there and we have two pencil marks here so we'll drop those into place and this one here has a pencil mark. I don't see a pencil mark on this side so it's on this side here and that's how we'll place those. We'll go ahead and uh, drop those screws into place and we're not going to tighten them. Absolutely do not tighten them. Just uh, lower them into the hole and uh, to secure the rings in place. And be sure you uh, maintain somewhere around, somewhere around a uh, couple of thirty seconds of an inch on both sides of your rings here. That's that's the appropriate uh, clearance on both sides. Neither one should come to a close. Now, you only need to have a couple of screws to uh, get them set up. Now, if you feel as if it's tight, immediately loosen it because you don't want to have, what I prefer to do is uh, loosen one ring entirely because you really only have to have one, one of the uh, ring sets. Uh, with any kind of tension whatsoever. And uh, we're going to take that, uh, just check and see how that was a little bit tight. The slightest amount of tightness will not allow that scope to move. So we're just going to back it off. Now we're going to mount it to our shoulder and check out the, uh, the eye relief. First thing we want to do is adjust the eye relief. The eye relief should be such that you have a full wide view, uh, unobstructed in your scope, and yet uh, wearing, no matter what clothing you wear, you should be in the field, you should be able to uh, see clearly. So I'm going to bring this scope back. I want to bring it back so that when I'm wearing heavy clothing, I can still see through the scope clearly. So I'm going to bring it back a little bit more. There we go. Now, what about the what about the uh, alignment of the crosshairs? Believe it or not, standing up erect and using your own God-given eyeballs, you can get those crosshairs absolutely level. You don't need to have fancy leveling equipment if you want. You can put it. You can secure the rifle so that it's vertical. In other words, so that the uh, buttstock is plumb. And <coughs> excuse me. And using a door jam, which is which is plumb as long as your house is made uh, square, it, using a door jam or a window or whatever, a window sill, anything that you know that is a absolutely level and plumb, you can use that to to position your crosshairs. But you really don't need to do that. You know, most of the time, when you when all is said and done, you can do it with the eyesight, just by simply looking through the scope, and you'll see very readily if that crosshair looks out of kilter. 
Now, if you wear glasses, I suggest you take glasses off because glasses will distort the uh, image. I'm absolutely plumb and level right now. So take your screwdriver and lightly tighten one side. You're not even tightening, just lightly putting tension on the th two threads back and forth, being aware that as you tighten, as you tighten one of these screws, you're drawing that top ring down and it's rotating. That will turn your scope. So be sure that as you, as you apply the tension on the screws, that you do it very, very, very systematically back and forth with just two screws. I'm only using two diagonal screws opposing and tightening that just one screw, just one ring, and double check it, make sure that your scope hasn't rotated. Once you're sure of that, try it, try it outside in different positions, sitting, kneeling, prone, without tightening any more screws. You've got just two screws tightened down securely, and you want to just check that out, and make sure that everything looks absolutely level and plumb to you when you're looking at it outside without any interference. When you're all done, we'll simply secure all the remaining screws. Okay, we're going to finish inserting each of these screws, and uh, I'm not tightening anything until I get them all in. And uh, now I see Benny's interested in doing something else. He wants to go to the range, I think. So we'll accommodate that very shortly. Once I've got them all, just the same finger tightness. When I say finger tightness, just, just uh, thumb and forefinger. And now you begin to tighten them as if you were tightening a uh, manifold gasket, tightening the many screws crisscross back and forth and tightening no more than a quarter of a turn at a time. You heard that little squeaky noise. That's indicating that we're getting things pretty tight here. You don't want to have them overly tight because uh, you don't want to distort your scope tube. The mechanical advantage that these screws provide on those rings is enormous. That, that sound right there, that's the end of it. Torque. Now we'll continue with the remaining screws and we're all done. Well, there we go. Looks good. A little out of character for the handiness of this rifle, but... Oh, darling, don't let spoil everything. I don't want to spoil anything. I just want to top it all off with something... So, uh... The crosshairs come up absolutely perfectly plumb and level. You know, some of the tricks that you can use is to simply look down the stock like this and you can see your crosshairs at a distance and you can tell if they're a little bit askew. But you know, your eye is the, your eye is the perfect level. And when you go outside and you look down, I guarantee you those are gonna be straight. So thanks for watching. Tune me in on Patreon and support me if you can. It really would help a lot when it comes to uh, purchasing ammo and things like that. And um, don't forget to hit that bell and subscribe. And God bless. You ready to go, Benny? Now let's go to the range. He's a good boy, I know.